not um, a lanyard, have their own body harness. Is there anyone here that doesn't have one? Don't have a lanyard. Don't have a lanyard? How come you don't have a lanyard? They got body harnesses supplied to us, but we never got lanyards. Okay, so we t we, I know we talked about this, uh, we made a little video up on, it's on YouTube, and we talked about how we're, we're um, the island's equipment is, is, is far better than ours, lucky bastards, uh, where they just have a winch, and we employ uh, a block and tackle basically, and it's a cumbersome item, so we did talk about using a lanyard between the block and tackle, a short lanyard. You can't do that. Pardon me? You can't use a lanyard. Enough, but we talk about using a short one, and that's probably the only way that uh, the guys can actually wear the lanyard without having the block and tackle laying against their back. I, d I don't think this really applies too much when you're in a turbine enclosure, because I mean, I would sooner see, see you guys uh, in a turbine enclosure if you were to wear your lanyard, uh, wear the uh, body harness and the lanyard, you have your spotter. Um, I think that's probably a better scenario than trying to win somebody out of a, a turbine enclosure that's three feet deep. Um, so we did we did talk about using the lanyard. Uh, we also talked about we are going to investigate uh, bringing in a, a the simpler winch system for our tripod, and that's going to be uh, be done here between now and the next meeting. Sean, you want to? Show us how to how to how to put a harness on. Mine, Does anyone not know how to put a harness on? Sure. How does this one go? <laughs> Just do the legs back up. It's the same as hers. All the same. commercial break. Don't worry, only millions of people on YouTube will be watching this. It's got a fish yet. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say it did, but I know it's got you. I should add with harnesses. It's got to be tightened. Using the using the buddy system really helps. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> and in which, in, which case, in which case, it's always possible because you guys won't likely be wearing this equipment unless you got a buddy with you. So, like I say, as you saw Sean try to put it on on a, on a, on a unit that was basically taken apart, um, I'd advise you guys when you store, store your lanyards that you don't need to take them all apart. Because um, when you do, you seem to get things twisted up. Um, they did, all they do is they... The, the leg harnesses pass through the body straps, and, they, and they, they tend to get twisted up. So like I say, once, you, once you've got it, you've got it fit for your clothing, uh, I'd advise that you just leave it all, to, uh, all, uh, all assembled and, uh, and uh, buckled up, and just do the che undo the chest strap to, uh, to put it on. So before I take that off, John. Yeah. I was just demonstrating this. Yeah. Um, we have no units that have a front D-ring. All of our units are rear D-rings. Um, because the front D-ring involves special training that you guys will never ever be able to really get, probably. Uh, the, the rear D-ring is, is the one that uh, is recognized mostly by uh, 
I would have to call like an intermediate user. Some of that doesn't use their units often. You'll see people that climb towers and whatnot. They got D-rings where they can attach in probably four different spots. They'll have a front D-ring, they'll have a rear D-ring, and then they'll have two hip D-rings. The hip D-rings are usually primarily for stabilization side to side. They're going to hold themselves to a tower or whatnot. And, and we're, we're not going to do that. That's not what we, we intend you guys to do. We don't want to climb any towers with it. Um, in the scissor lifts, uh, we require them in the scissor lifts. I think on an ESO site, maybe Don, you can help us. Um, I'm not exactly sure where ESO enforces us to click to. I can pull the box and scissor lifts past an anchor point to have to That's what I was going to say because um, I, I don't want you basically. Uh, Attaching to a point in the ceiling, the lift, all the lifts come with an engineered uh, D-ring point. That's where we want you to clip to. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense. I know if, uh, if I was high up on a scissor lift and something happened to the scissor lift, I, I, I wouldn't want to ride the scissor lift down. But uh, I can't comment any further than that, other than uh, uh, the word, word. If you were to hook onto a uh, onto a truss. In the ceiling, that's not an engineered point that probably wouldn't fly on an ESO job, just due to the fact that you're you're clipping onto something that it, uh, probably there isn't anything, any criteria or any information on whether it would hold your weight or not. I know in some of the car washes, I think they're building the inside of the rooms now with there was talk about that. Uh, some never happened. points never happened. No, eh? So um, until there's something better offered. <laughs> um, on an ESSO site or a shell site when we're using uh, scissor lifts and we're using our fall and rest gear uh, or body harnesses and lanyards, you'll be clipping to the inside of the machines where um, through pictograms they usually show you or there's instruction in the, the unit itself <clears throat> on where to attach to. Um, Jason made a point about uh, using, la uh, using lanyards. Obviously if you're into a, an area where uh, you're down deep uh, with, our, with our unit, for example. If you have the block and tackle attached to a, a six foot lanyard, if it was to deploy, that lanyard is probably going to become about eight feet long, anywhere from uh, six to eight feet long. So you got to bear in mind that if you're going to win somebody out of a hole, uh, the lanyard is, is going to come up to the point where the block and tackle reaches the end of its, the end of its rope. So that might mean that it's going to leave you dangling in the hole by four feet or six feet or maybe more. So use that in mind. I know I talked to Tom and, and Rick about this a couple uh, days ago, where when we when we use the lanyard on our harness, they're actually attaching directly to the um, to the bottom of the block and tackle to the safety hook. And in a lot of ways, that's probably pretty cumbersome. And uh, it may not permit you to do everything you need to do while attached to it. So I, I think common sense comes into play. Uh, like I say, if you're in a three foot turbine sump, I'm, I'm not as concerned that I, that I see the tripod set up as I'm concerned to see the air mover going. Uh, you're wearing a body harness and a lanyard or, or, a, or a safety rope, which we have safety ropes in the back that have rated hooks and, and rated hooks and clevises on them. Uh, any questions? We need an air mover on the island. We need an air mover on the island. Okay? We need one. You, no, do. We don't have one. you do need an air mover on the island. So in the, in, the, in the interim, from now on, from today on, any turbine enclosures you guys go into until we get to this air mover, uh, I guess you'll go to Hazmasters and get one to use, or United or whoever. That's what we have here. Right, okay. Right. Okay, that's perfect. I like. I, I'm glad to hear that. So, but like I say, uh, from now on, we'll kind of mandate it that uh, in our minutes we're going to get you one. Uh, we're going to investigate removing the block and tackle safety device that we have on the mainland, going to a wind system. So there's a couple of uh, items that uh, need to be addressed.